afternoon. What I will tell you today is something what you experience every day, but which you may not be aware if it should have affected the buildings you live in. I am going to tell you a story that had puzzled me as a young architect and how I later in life resolved it. In my early days of architectural practice, one of the puzzles I had was to bring into terms what I felt architecture should be done with what I was taught at the School of Architecture, how it should be done. I see people live in simple houses. I see some even survive in plastic shelters. On the other hand, the standards I was taught at the School of Architecture would tell me that a wall should be built in double bricks and even be insulated. Yet I know I lived in a house with a wall half thick comfortably. As a young architect, I was helpless and had to continue with the contradiction. Architecture is complex. You don't mess with it. You do it as everyone does it. Not long, I got a scholarship and went to Finland, a totally cold country. Finland is a country famous in architecture. It is the only country I know that had a picture of a local architect in one of its paper many notes. The buildings I saw in Finland were very simple, clean boxes, but I failed to appreciate their quality. It was not the kind of architecture I had expected to see. In a way, I was disappointed with what I was experiencing. My university study courses in Finland started, and I was given a certain design exercise. I remember the discussion I had with my Finnish teacher in one of my design consultation sessions. I remember to this day the exact words she said to my design. She would look in my, to my skates and say, I like it, but I would not do it this way. I like it, but I would not do it this way. I did not understand what she meant. I was confused. It took me so long to figure out where the whole contradiction has come from. I realized buildings in cold climates need to minimize their exposure to the outside to save heating costs. I realized buildings in cold climates need to limit the length of their external walls to save energy. As a result, buildings in cold climates end up becoming simple boxes, simple prisms from the outside. Intuitively, I had already felt the buildings in my place would do the opposite. The buildings in my place would rather want to open to the outside. Every room, every space would want to expose itself to the outside for a breeze. Cold climates want to close. Buildings in my climate want to open. Buildings in cold climates want minimum exposure to the outside. Buildings in my climate want maximum exposure to the outside. Now I understood what my Finnish teacher meant when she said, I like it, but I will not do it this way. For her, every external wall is a loss of energy. To me, every external wall is a gain of energy. Her instinct and my instinct function differently. Every time she would draw an external wall, she would feel a loss of energy. Every time I draw an external wall, I feel a gain of energy. 
She tried to reduce her external walls. I'll try to increase my external walls. We respond to reality in a totally opposite way. This was a huge realization. It was the key to unlock the puzzle that had perplexed me as a young architect. But I haven't told you the whole secret. The secret why comfort is achieved by simply opening a door or a window in Addis Ababa is because the daytime temperature is more or less the same inside and outside the building. This is super unique. To have same temperature inside out is super unique. It means you don't need to do anything to your building to correct the climate. How many of you are aware that Addis Ababa, your city, has a daytime temperature that's equal inside out? Addis Ababa is a place what wouldn't matter to leave your door open or closed during the daytime. In fact, you have better comfort if you leave your door or window open during the daytime. This is only possible in warm and dry climates. If what I am saying is correct, then the architecture we build in this part of the world should necessarily be different from that of the North. The thought of this idea excited me. I imagined buildings that are lived inside out, buildings that are open to the outside, buildings that would interact with the streets, buildings that would interact with the city. I felt the realization of this idea would change the look of our cities. An inside out equal temperature is a heaven for architecture. It is the ideal climate for architecture to flourish. Uh, stairs is one of my early projects. It's a building that it recognizes the inside out story and responds to to, sorry, excuse me, it's a building that responds to the unique climate of Addis Ababa and responds to the inside-out story. The main circulation of the building is open to the outside. The stairs, the passage that lead to every of space is open to the outside. There is no physical separation between the inside and the outside. This is unique, this is a unique experience. Visitors would often stop and watch the city life around them. The building, in effect, interacts with the city. The circulation of the building is cut from a single box. The very cutting of the stairs actually articulates the architecture itself. Windows are not arbitrarily open, but the very recessed space provides the uh, window positions naturally. The black color you see in the picture is the roof that separates the inside from the outside, which is only a half millimeter thick metal sheet. It is another proof of the inside out equal temperature story that actually the building functions with such a, a thin separation. The, the inside out story has encouraged us to design such an open bridge connecting the stairs to the next building. The bridge perforated all the way around. Again, it's another uh, statement that uh, the building is placed in a climate uh, like this. Another example I'll show you today is a building we designed in Awasa, a city 275 kilometers south of Addis Ababa. Awasa has a slightly warmer climate than Addis Ababa. One of our early uh, observations in Awasa was 
how people occupy the spaces in cafes. We observed uh, outdoor shaded spaces were more occupied than interior spaces. In f in <coughs> sorry, we learned the inside out story would even work better in Awasa. In fact, you would not need a building in Awasa if you have a tree that would give you good shade. We took this concept seriously and designed the student dining building in Awasa University basically as a shade. We closed the east and west facade uh, to block the direct sun, and uh, instead we opened uh, a louvered window in the south to bring in fresh air to the interior. We provided uh, an upper courtyard at the middle to allow the building to breathe, taking out all the heat and the odor of the food. It worked well. The lesson is, most parts of Ethiopia has such a unique climate that responds to the inside-out story I just told you. A climate that provides same temperature inside out. A climate that allows to design buildings that could be lived inside out. We should be conscious of this special opportunity and design buildings that would interact with the streets, buildings that would interact with the city. We should create unique cities that look like us. Buildings in cold climates are stern, serious, but buildings in warm climates could be designed to be lively. We should exploit the potentials of the place we live in. If we recognize the inside-out story, Ethiopia will not only be a home to smiling people, but could become a home to smiling architecture. Thank you.